Hello, my name is Arun Gupta and I work for Oracle. In this multi-part screencast series, I will show you how NetBeans 6.9, a powerful IDE, provides comprehensive tooling around Java EE 6 and Glassfish 3. This multi-part tutorial will show you how to create a simple Java EE 6 application using Java server pages, servlets, and enterprise Java Beans. Then we will retrieve some values from a database using Java Persistence API 2 POJO entities. Then we will extend the application to add support for Java Server Faces 2 and create an application using Facelet's templating language. The application will evolve by adding support for context and dependency injection. And finally, we will show how to publish a RESTful web service using JAX-RS. This part will begin with creating a simple Java EE 6 application. So let's go to our NetBeans IDE and build this application. After you download, install, and start up your NetBeans 6.9, this is the window that you get. There's a projects, there's a services pane, you got multiple databases installed, I've configured some additional database connections, and there's a Glassfish Server 3. You know, either, you can either use the pre-configured one or install an additional one as well. Let's go to projects and create our simple Java EE 6 application. New project, Java web, web application, name it, hello world, click on next. Deploying on Glassfish Server 3, this is a Java EE 6 web profile application. Web profile is a subset of the full-blown Java EE 6 specification targeted towards web developer. Click on next. I'm not going to add any frameworks as we're going to build upon that a little bit later and click on finish. This creates my very simple template web project. I can right click on the project, select and say run it. And this is going to run my project and it shows me a simple hello world page over here. Now if I can go back to my IDE and I change the text here to hello glassfish world, I save it, go back to my browser, refresh the page and the change is instantly visible to you right away. So that's pretty cool. Now let's add a simple servlet to our Java EE 6 application. For that in the IDE right click here, say new and servlet. Call this as hello servlet, specify a package name, ideally I can click on finish and be done with it, but just to show you one of the improvements in Java EE 6, the deployment descriptor which is my web.xml is optional in most of the common cases. All this information instead will be specified in a uh, annotation on my POJO class. So click on finish and this is how my POJO class looks like. This is a hello servlet. It's got add web servlet annotation in here and this is all the servlet name and URL patterns over here and this is my process request method that is being called from do get and do post. So now if I go back to my browser and specify the URL here, hello servlet, it gives me a blank page, at least a blank page, not a 404. So let's go back to our IDE. What happened is as soon as this servlet file was created, it was saved and the IDE recognized a new artifact was saved to the project, so it automatically deployed the application for you. Right click on the project, click on properties, look at run, and this is the property I was talking about. This is an optional, purely a development time property, and you can of course disable it. Now let's uncomment the generated code for me. I save it here, go back to my browser, and the change is again instantly visible to me. Deploy on save, boost your productivity, really cool. Let's go back to our servlet and let me show you another similar feature over here. So here is some template code I generated. This is basically um, accessing a session attribute, initializes it and saves it back into the session by incrementing one, showing how many times the page has been accessed. So I save the page here Go back to my browser, refresh it, and it says the page has been accessed one time. Refresh it a couple of more times, and that makes it three. Now if I go back to my browser, 
or IDE and here I say again I save the page here go back to my browser refresh the page notice the text change but the session count preserved across multiple redeploys that's pretty cool so if your business logic has changed but session data has not changed you don't want to hit that cost unnecessarily in my IDE go to services right click on the server click on properties and this is the property I'm talking about preserve session across redeployment so you can of course disable it but it's pretty cool to this application now let's add a simple enterprise Java bean and invoke it from our servlet so for that go back to projects right click here say new and we're going to add a new session bean let's call the bean as hello bean I put it in the package server you can have any of the types stateless stateful or singleton now singleton is a new bean that has been introduced in Java E6 it's basically a single instance of bean per app for the entire VM and click on finish so this generates my POJO you know, it's a hello bean with add stateless annotation I can right click here say insert code and add business method give it the name let's say the return type is string add a parameter name name and type string and click on OK so this generates my template business method and here I can actually add the implementation hello plus name now in order to invoke it from the servlet I go to my servlet and here I can say inject the bean and let's resolve the import and in my servlet I can say let's put this in an h2 bean dot say hello and we say hello to our friend Duke and let's put our closing h2 tag and save it now if I go back to my browser and I refresh the page again so the session has been preserved and we also see the message coming from our bean let's go back to IDE for a second and see how we can actually test this bean as well so I can right click on this bean I can go to tools and let's see if I can show you somehow or go to tools and say create J unit test okay I'm going to create a unit test for this uh, enterprise Java bean I click on select let's choose the uh, J unit version 4.x and this is going to create a J unit test for me with all these different options I click on OK so here is my simple bean test here is my um, test method and all it says is you know it's going to invoke this method and it's going to invoke it using the embeddable EJB container now that is again a new API that is introduced in Java E6 and I'm going to say hello again to our friend Duke and in that case the express the expected result is hello Duke and it's gonna assert on it now we can remove the fake fail statement added over here I can right click here and I can say run this file this is gonna run my test and test that my bean looks good so as you can see the unit test is now running you can see the progress over here is firing up my embeddable EJB container and the result is the test passed so that's pretty cool so instantly you can add an EGB write a unit test for it invoke it from the servlet all seamlessly so end-to-end -end, you know you can very create a very easily you can create a very simple Java E6 application using NetBeans 6.9 uh, that's it for this screencast I will leave you with some references you can download Glassfish from glassfish.org you can download NetBeans from netbeans.org. You can ask any questions around Glassfish on the Glassfish forum and follow us on the Twitter handle at Glassfish. Thank you.